that music. He's not a bat, he's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bat Minute! Greetings citizens of Gotham and welcome once again to Bat Minute Returns the show helmed by a gold-plated bachelor and a lonely secretary. You can guess who is who in, in that. Uh, I think we all know. <clears throat> I am one of your hosts, John Parker. Uh, I am the other host and assistant, Niall McGowan. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you yes, suck at me into that one. one. <laughs> <laughs> we are joined once again by very special guests. We have Mark and Nathan from the DC Cinematic Minute. Hey, I'm Nathan. And I'm Mark. Hey, thank you for joining us again. I don't know why you decided to come back. We surely put you off last time. <laughs> well, they said I was going to be a star. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I thought, we were, I thought the talent scouts were here. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah um, about that. Is that a camera? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we tell all the guests. <laughs> <laughs> the unfortunate thing is like, yes, it is. It usually is a camera. But... <laughs> Now, this is minute 71. The minute starts with what we can only assume, surely, is bloody slaughter. It can't be anything else. They're not just knocking her out, right? They're murdering this woman. <laughs> and it ends with the discussion of an ex. Well, that, yeah, that's the thing, like, straight off. is like, so the penguin throws this thing at her. That is a wet thud. That's not a, yeah. I've knocked you out thud. That's like, that. that's mm -hmm. penetrated skin. Like, it's clearly, mm -hmm. a, there's a clear squelch to it, which is not oh, evidence mm -hmm. when the, the Ice Princess appears later in the film. So I'm not too sure why they went with that sound effect rather than just like, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, it's so, it's so bizarre. It, it, it almost makes me think that they did kill her and then they were like, Reanimator? No, like oh. like reshoot, like uh, maybe a little too dark. Maybe let's bring her back and yeah. like do something. Because it would make but sense was, to like, kill her with the batarang, I think, because that that frames Batman. Like how how much more detrimental is she to have her even come back? Like how important is that? Well, the thing like, is, the, the, you just need her out of the picture. Well, they bring her back to kill her, but just more publicly. <laughs> they just wanted to make sure that everyone sees that they've killed her. When they could have just it was a trial run. Yeah, they could have yeah. they could have just got her here and then left the batarang. It's like yeah, it's good as anything. And then it's they're already got this backup plan. Well, well, actually not even a backup. Just part two of the main plan, where they're gonna have the Batmobile rigged so it'll just drive around crazy, and that that's gonna damage Batman's reputation even further. So there is no real need for all this, you know, kidnapping. And I think it's the only thing you can really bring it in with is that Catwoman did specifically say I want to be like integral to this guy's fall down and her only part in the main plan is yeah she's she's there when when they when he comes to rescue the ice princess so I guess maybe there's like all oh, right well we better give Catwoman something to do in this plan I guess it's so bizarre because like it to me, it seems quite clear. Like, you would just kill her off here in most films. Like, they yeah. murder her. They leave the Batarang. But, mm -hmm. Frame Batman. Cool. Look, even mm -hmm. if Batman accidentally killed this woman, he still killed her. It would make him look bad. But, okay, whatever. They, they took a very different route. Maybe, maybe too dark. But it's a pretty dark movie in general. <laughs> I, I don't have a lot of confidence in the Penguin's throw, though, either. I can imagine he probably, like, hit her in the side or something. And then the poodle lady Ooh. is like, oh, God, just let me do it. And then the poodle lady finishes it off. She just picked up, like, the space heater and clamors her over the head with it. She's like, right, done. Yeah, yeah. There's a mean look on that poodle lady. She looks tough. Oh, yeah. The well, poodle lady's probably got Penguin. She's probably, like, his Alfred. She's got the yeah, Penguin yeah. to where he is now. And it's just, like, the power behind the throne. <laughs> I can't work out her age is the only thing I've, I've always been confused by. Because 
from afar she looks old and up close she looks young. Yeah, she looks very young in, in these shots. Like I could imagine yeah. if you told me she was like 27 or something, I'd be like, yeah, I'd buy that. But there's other shots you could tell me she was like 40. I'm like, well, I guess. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Either way, she's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is she supposed to be a circus freak? Like, is she supposed to be like giant woman? I know she was. She was mentioned in the the microfiche newspaper articles that Bruce was looking up in the Red Triangle Gang as just a, a, a strange poodle lady, which was like, wow. I gotta see this act to find out what the hell she does with this poodle. <laughs> I think it just dances around and stuff. You know, like you get on uh, Britain's Got Talent. There's always a dancing dog. It's probably that yeah. kind of thing. She's probably like a super strict Victorian Russian lady. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the dog would pickpocket people. <laughs> oh, I like that. I could see that. She distracts yeah. gentlemen with the dog. The dog is doing tricks, and in her sleeve is a vial of poison. Oh. And she poisons the royal family of Russia. Uh, okay. That's what it is. That's really yeah. how they were killed. That that mm-hmm. would be a stipulation, yeah. though. If And there there is a potential if as well, according to Michael Uslan. That there may be some extension of the the Burton verse coming, like whether it be in comic book or animated form or whatever. There yes, seems to be please. something that there he claims that there is something in the works. But if there is to be like a, say an animated movie continuing continuing the story, mm-hmm. I, because the poodle lady gets away at the end, she just disappears with the rest of the the gang. So I would like a mm-hmm. mention of her, just like. Yeah, you know, maybe she had her own little crime wave, or maybe she's, mm-hmm. you know, because she does play a boutique owner in Boardwalk Empire later on. Maybe there's a boutique that appears, and it's like, doesn't that woman behind the counter look familiar and stuff? And I would like something like that, but I don't think the I don't think they're as focused on. I don't think Tim Burton himself now would be focused on the poodle lady as much as we are looking at the movie minute by minute. No. The only thing I've been wanting that I think that they missed out on. I want Poison Ivy played by Gina Davis or portray- like Ooh. some representation of Gina Davis, like from the Tim Burton, like like the idea of what that would be. Because I was like, D- yeah. Gina Davis was big in like his, his films and stuff like that. Uh, and I was always like, oh, well, why Uma Thurman? Why don't you, you know? Mm. I could see that. I mean, I love Uma. Don't get me wrong, because she, mm. she knows what kind of a movie she's in and plays to it. But I, mm-hmm. I would like to have seen that as well. Let me see that. If it's an animated or comic books, just like get Gina Davis's likeness and make it Poison Ivy. That's what I want to see. <laughs> I'm sure someone did fan art about like they like tried to continue the Tim Burton like Batman universe and like they took, you know, they took uh, Billy D. Williams and like showed what he would look like as Two Face. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gina Davis as Poison Ivy. I think that was, that was a thing make that was so. actually. Pitch that was that was Kate Leth, the comic book artist Kate Leth pitched that as a thing to DC. Uh, they call I think they called it like Batman eighty nine, like the comic, and did, it was yeah. designed to continue everything. And then uh, yeah, they flat out turned her down. And then we asked her to come on the show. She flat out turned us down. So like oh, oh man, <laughs> don't put that in the episode. <laughs> oh, it's not as if she's listening. <laughs> uh, you never know. It will be know. something though that like. Um, that we're making Batman and Robin, and they're like, we could get Gina Davis or Uma Thurman, and she, they're like, nah, because like Gina Davis was in Cutthroat Island, and I mean, we don't want this movie to turn out like people thinking it sucks or something, so we don't want to be associated with a, <laughs> as big a bomb as Cutthroat Island. No, we'll get someone who's a surefire hit like Uma Thurman to come in and save the entire production. Oh yes, and it, it worked. <laughs> did I know Cutthroat Island bombed, but did it ruin Gina Davis's career? I think I, I didn't recall seeing her around for a long while after that. Yeah, Certainly I guess a while. now I'm putting, yeah, now I'm putting two and two together. I'm going, oh, did it really hurt her that bad? I think she, she she's in a show now. Oh yeah, I think she was uh, in that Exorcist TV show, and then she did. She had a sitcom for a bit. Nearly, t- she had like the Gina Davis show, but again, because. Irish TV no, just gets every piece of crap America <laughs> throws out, and they'll just play it over here. There's no, there's no selection. It's just like whatever you got. So we got like Bet, the Bet Midler sitcom, and the <laughs> Stephen Weber show, and the Gina Davis show was on Monday nights for a while. Yeah, we get the junk that America don't want. <laughs> but um, no, because the, the thing that like, yeah would have been Cutthroat Island, then Long Kiss Goodnight, which people like now. 
but they used to. I remember that was always kind of like reviled for a while. And yeah, it seemed to be like she's kind of back nowadays. But it took a yeah, Gina Davis seemed to be on the uh, on the outs for a couple of years. So much so, I remember they made a joke about it in Family Guy. They had the whole. I remember Stewie was trying to go to sleep and he was talking to Brian, going like, "Whatever happened to Gina Davis? She used to make movies, but now she doesn't make movies anymore. She has a bad tooth to gum ratio and all this sort of business." So. God damn it! <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Uh, she deserves better. Yeah, maybe. She does. Oh, so that we've had we've had misery with the Ice Princess and now misery with Gina Davis. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking of someone who deserves better, Alfred's here to <laughs> dole out uh, dinner for Bruce and Selena. Well, we, we should probably point out that it did cut to Wayne Manor. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he just walks into this tent. Excuse me, yeah, sir. The- <laughs> oh, I'm in the wrong room. Steps over oh. the body. <laughs> There's a wonderful exterior shot of Wayne Manor as well. This is probably my favorite, well, shot of it. It, it looks incredible. Even though it's completely different to the last movie, as we've pointed out. I've still got that problem in that, like, there's one room we see Bruce and Selena in that's lit. It seems to be entirely lit by the fire. Yet there are several lights on in Wayne Manor that are about a mile apart. So it's like, why did this Bruce Wayne just throwing away his money? Friggin', they will need this power plant for this friggin'. <laughs> Bruce Wayne just keeps leaving his lights lying on willy nilly all the damn time. Maybe Max Shrek has been to Wayne Manor. This guy, <laughs> he's just leaving the, he, he's just leaving lights on all the damn time. We're gonna need a, an extra power plant <laughs> to make up for this jerk. And surely the Batcave is is sucking a lot of the city's power. <laughs> Maybe that could be at the end that like Max it's, Shrek uh, actually lays out all his. Well, the reason I'm doing this is because of you, <laughs> and he just lays yeah. it all out. <laughs> and Batman's oh my God, like, it's me. Like, oh shit! Oh no, we do need another power plant. Oh, okay, for maybe I'll run for mayor. You can be my backer. <laughs> is uh is the exterior shot? Is that a is that a miniature? Is that a model? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it is a model. I would assume. In the first movie, it was it wasn't. Uh, it was but yeah, yeah, yeah. House. Burton's just gone full no. full Burton in this movie. <laughs> There's some pretty Maybe cool good, yeah. uh, get it. behind the scenes shots of people working on Wayne Manor and stuff. We have to see the the model yeah. detail and stuff. It's really really well done. But the... yeah, I'm a huge fan of miniature though. So keep. I wonder you, if they do still do exist you? somewhere. Like that's just one thing. Like I wish they should they yeah. would bring back. Like there's been multiple Wayne Manors. But, like, start reusing some. If you start reusing some of the models from these, that is awesome. It is kind of it is kind of weird when people just throw those things away. But like, oh, do they? Uh, yeah. Or do they lot, sell? They have to sell there's them. There's a lot like, of things that get auctioned stuff. off. There's a lot of things that get thrown away. Like um, oh, well, The Godzilla stuff from Kill Bill. Oh, yeah. They reused that. But it, mm. there was, like, um, I guess we were talking about attractions because we live in Orlando, Florida, and attract like talk, talking about <laughs> roller coasters and theme parks, theme park bits all the time, and yeah. we like talk about like the Jaws ride and mm-hmm. Kong ride, and those things just get thrown away. Like they don't really get auctioned off. Well, most of Kong was repurposed, though. So. Most oh. of it is thrown away. Mm. <laughs> no, they did use to like, do that at least, because in uh, in Batman eighty nine, we were talking about this towards the end with the um, the gargoyles. They, there was an article I was reading with someone who owns the gargoyle now that the Joker puts his hat on and things. Um, and they basically got it off the back of a van because it was going to oh get thrown God. away. Because they just, it, they said then, like, people just threw away all the props. They didn't care. There wasn't really, like, a market for this kind of thing. So they got it off the back of a van and gave it to their daughter. And it was in their daughter's room as she was growing up as a teenager. <laughs> no, the thank most, you. What the, the hell? I would <laughs> love thing. that. Are you kidding? <laughs> Yeah, then they sold it on to some guy who wanted it. So it wasn't actually the studio or anyone anyone connected to the movie who sold it for yeah. profit. I remember too, like the the, the <laughs> was one of the towers from Axis Chemicals. Like the model of Axis Chemicals yeah, was yeah. used in the Guest House Paradiso, like a really terrible yeah. Rick Mail A. Edmondson comedy from like the mid nineties and stuff. That blew my mind. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> It just yeah, it'd be the weird. How do you, uh, hey Marcy, you ever seen a departed? That guy who was in that put his hat on this gargoyle. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a claim to fame. 
I really like the idea, though. Because you would assume, like, oh, she had that in her room growing up. Maybe she was, like, a Lydia Dietz-style goth teen. But I do like mm-hmm. the idea that it was, like, she was a real girly girl. And it was, like, <laughs> she had, like, a little tiara on the gargoyle and stuff. And, like, just really everything else was painted pink. And yeah. she used to, like, practice makeup techniques by, like, painting the gargoyle and stuff. Yeah, I, I thought maybe she was be pestering her dad all the time. Like, Dad, can you get this out of my room, please? I don't want it anymore. <laughs> It's like, you know, have you seen The Departed? Do you not realize that that guy put his head on this? <laughs> oh, that would uh, win anyone over. It has like a L.A. Lakers jersey mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. <laughs> Where, so where's that gargoyle now? The guy just still has it? Uh, no, yeah. Uh, that, oh, we talked about this. I can't remember now. Oh, Jesus. Everybody, go back and listen to the last season. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out like what uh, episode. Yeah, that's be how like you get listeners. Minutes are 120 or something like that. Yeah, probably. I think, yeah, imagine. Didn't that they right. sell it? <laughs> if I remember rightly, Niall, didn't they, the family, when she moved out, sell it to a collector who did the article? I think so. Yeah. Again, I'm sure we, we have the actual details <laughs> in the last season. If only we episode. could remember the these things. <laughs> Listen, we talk a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you throw all this information out of your brain once you move on to a new film. It's, it's like, no, no, true. don't need that anymore. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like and, two movies time. It's like, do you know that Michael Keaton played Batman previously? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, it, it's the only thing to keep us sane. You, you would be surprised how much the, that, like, what is considered like behind the scenes news of DC films just comes back like three months later as if no one ever new and they were just like they'll say something really just it's something that we all know already uh, and like <laughs> i don't know just you, you'll see it well, so like, many examples. apparently willem dafoe was considered for the joker like yeah <laughs> it's been brought up but it'll be a big headline They're like oh my god breaking news <laughs> we move then inside wayne manor and uh, I love the description of this scene in the uh, the strict revised script. But it's it, it's just the the words it uses. It's it's wonderful. It says, "Nat King Cole on the stereo does his romantic Yuletide thing. Bruce and Selina, in matching mellow melancholy moods, sit close on the couch opposite a blazing hearth. Alfred refills their eggnog, then discreetly ducks out." <laughs> As he does. I just love that uh, matching mellow melancholy moods. It's like one of our mm-hmm. outros now. Well, it's, it's, apparently, I would have thought eggnog would be a bit heavy for uh, for a, a romantic meal. But mm-hmm. yeah. You know, have, you, uh, yeah. have you guys I, ever had a date with, with, e- with featured eggnog? <laughs> I don't like eggnog. I've never been on a you. date. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, I mean, <laughs> Oh, that was good timing. I was uh, <laughs> I was having a party the other day. Uh, we were having our Thanksgiving for friends uh, not too long ago, and uh, we have uh, there's a Puerto Rican version of eggnog. It's called coquito, oh. and uh, it's it's a very uh, it's a creamy base liqueur type drink that you make. Just it's basically Puerto Rican eggnog. Um, but I was thinking about it as I was drinking it, and much like eggnog, I'm going. What am I doing drinking this? I'm not gonna like, like you know how you'd have to drink a lot of anything just to get like actually inebriated enough to enjoy a party. Sure. That, and so it was like I'm just drinking a giant glass of Warm cream, cream. Yeah. cream. Like it's so nice. heavy. Mm-hmm. It's so heavy. Yeah, but it's like I'm, I mean, you could follow with the argument of like, yeah, it's nice to have a glass of milk before bed yeah but then it's like i'm at a party throw in that eggnog man no what who is this guy i just like (laughs) when you're trying to drink and stay up and lively yeah a big old glass of cream is not gonna it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna go to bed like (laughs) was it supposed to be like a like an after dinner like dessert thing like you get some eggnog you get a nice christmas cookie you sit by the fire was that supposed to be what it is sure I'm sure that's great. I'm sure that's great. <laughs> and and maybe in this mood, that is exactly what you need. Yeah. Just a nice little eggnog or coquito and just like cozy up next to each other. Maybe that, you know, get in the mood of things, relax a bit. Uh, yeah, it's getting hot in here, Mark. Yeah, Jeez. very <laughs> romantic. I think it's perfect for this setting. Um, but then I realized, yeah, I don't need a big old glass of eggnog. Yeah, so, no thanks. Uh, I think over very- here... 
See, we don't really have eggnog in England, which is weird. You think we would have uh, sort of got on board with that by now, but it's not a thing. Mm. I th- in this situation, I would lean more towards uh, mulled wine. I don't know if you really have that in America or not. Yeah, mm. we just had some. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mulled there you wine go. is is fantastic. Yeah. See, I'd be on the mulled wine with my date. That'd be fine. That that that's more appropriate. I feel for this setting, and it's Christmas. You're by the fire. That's great. See, I, I have made eggnog previously out of like oh i want to try this thing you always hear about in apparently in like america it just seems like oh it's like buy the carton in supermarkets for like 96 days every every year <laughs> mm-hmm. but like i had to go and make it and the amount of sugar in it is crazy you like, pretty much put an entire bag of sugar in this thing and then at How one point i'm making this was just like to serve like, like three or four people or something <laughs> but uh the at one point last year, I probably have mentioned this on air before, but like, because uh, me and John featured on the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation Days, I was like, oh, I'll make some eggnog. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I've yeah. got some extra rum just like around. I'll put the rum in the eggnog. And then I looked up again how to make eggnog for a second time. I was like, oh my God, there's <laughs> so much effort in the pudding just to make that. So I ended up just drinking just the rum by itself on air. And like, <laughs> exactly. Like, no, quite late you're... in that episode, you can tell that I'm blatantly plastered but i don't think any <laughs> of the people making it knew that <laughs> uh no see that's exactly where it gets to and you know like when you have parties and stuff and you're like why am i what is what is with this you know like it, just drink it just drink the rum just 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 get it in the bloodstream like that's all we're trying to do here like when when you're having a romantic moment like this with bruce wayne and selena kyle then it's okay to have uh, of course, he's also got the the gold plated butler, so he doesn't have to make it. It's being made for them, so yeah. of course they're going to say yes to it because they don't have to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just I, I you know I think uh, for us over here in the states, the colonies, if you will, um, <laughs> <laughs> Christmas Vacation is the uh, the film we all think about. I think when we think about eggnog and film, because they have like the moose mugs, the moose glasses. Oh like, yeah, oh yeah, it's very prominent. Uh, you can sometimes find those in stores. See, we don't really don't have that say. movie over here either. It's not. It's not a thing at all. <laughs> well, it'll be. It'll be on, but it won't be like revered. It'll just be like there. And sometimes they play it at about like nine in the morning, so they have to edit out any of the <laughs> things that might actually be funny in it. So we just, it get just this... Oh, I was gonna say, is it just Christmas Vacation, or is it just like National Lampoon? Is just not like a thing. Oh, really it's not like National Lampoon. Any of them. Doesn't. No, yeah. that's the thing. Like for oh, up until Community came out, I knew that Chevy Chase was an actor, but I had never really seen him in anything because National Lampoon movies weren't that big over here. Yeah. Fletch yeah. was a kind of thing that was like maybe big in the eighties, but not did not mm-hmm. have a legacy over here. So mm-hmm. it was around the time it was when Community emerged. I was like, oh, so this is Chevy Chase. This is who this guy is. And then of course I find out that he's like one of the m- most hated people in hollywood and stuff yeah, since then you're not missing much <laughs> no the, the few bits um, of stuff i've seen him do uh, they're not that funny i'll be honest and he seems nah. like a quite a i don't want to be too mean i'm just gonna say it he seems like quite a horrible guy <laughs> yeah oh yeah and and i mean i think that's um i mean i listen to interviews and stuff and I, that's usually like the general consensus but i mean he had his time it's whatever it's chevy, chevy chase and yeah. it's nothing special um <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to go back uh, real quick on the description the script description of this thing. They say that Nat King Cole is doing his Yuletide thing. Yeah, was his that Yuletide th- th- thing? They can get away with just being that, just you know, black and white. Just he's just doing he's doing his yeah he's doing his Yuletide thing. Like you <laughs> yeah. can just you can get away with it. You don't have to say he's Yuletide's serenade. He's not playing. Tickling no. the 88s. He's here's, just, yeah, he's doing his Yuletide Yeah, thing. here's what I thought was weird about that is because usually with screenplays, well, they get into like a thing where it's like they want it kind of abstract enough for interpretation yeah. uh, for the director to get involved and be like, okay, well, this is how I'm going to set that up. Mm-hmm. And so it, what was weird is that that, that description was very um, almost specific and, and like very descriptive. And, and I was thinking like, wow, they're really like, the screenplay is almost directing what should happen instead of the director looking at the screenplay and directing mm-hmm. how that should happen. Yeah. And so that's why in things like, you know, Nat King Cole does his thing is, is more on par of what, how it should be said. It should yeah. be like, 
Nat King Cole does his thing. Yeah, and or so the Nat King Cole playing in background. Yeah, and so and so then the director goes, okay, so this is how I'm going to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Instead of like, oh, well, the screenplay says that uh, uh, Alfred comes in, he pours the drinks, and he like quietly ducks out, and it's like, okay, but maybe the actor would, reads that, and then he goes, okay, so maybe I should do this and this. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's the best bit, really. That, that, that's where the real art lies, is interpreting these things. We'll say, though, uh, because we get then, of course, Alfred comes in delivering this dinner that, you know, Selena has been invited over for. And it does this movie thing that I always hate where, like, so he's brought in this tray. They never touch this food, whatever it is. We don't (laughs) see what it is. But then throughout the rest of the scene, they never look at it. It's just Alfred slaved away in the kitchen to make this. And then it's just left there. And, you know, whenever Bruce goes out to be Batman and Selena takes off to be Catwoman, he's going to come in and be like... They didn't even touch it. They didn't even <laughs> take the freaking sheath off it to see what it was. <laughs> that, that's why he serves him cold soup all those minutes ago because you know he knows that he's not gonna he's not gonna touch it anytime soon. Nah, just give him cold food. It's fine. It would be great though if like he brought, like that the starter was Vichy Soir again, <laughs> yeah. and then like Bruce is trying to show off to Selena is like it's a it's Vichy Soir. It's supposed to be served cold. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know oh that. my god, you're so cultured, Bruce. <laughs> I, Selena here as well. She absolutely just rips into him. I think it's it's unwarranted, and she also insults Alfred so much because she says, uh, "You know, surely the gold plated bachelor bit has gotten a bit stale." So, uh, whoa, calm down. <laughs> but, uh, like she's acting as if he's the uh, the Bruce of the other movies, the Playboy Bruce. You know, it's not like he's living it up and going wild. Oh, he's a bachelor. I actually kind of like this. Re- yeah, like this rapport between them though, because she throws that out because the, the, you know it's. This is this is Catwoman, so you know this is like the real. I don't take no b- from anyone. I've not got mm-hmm. time for manners and stuff like that. But the fact then that like, whereas with Vicky Vale and stuff, Bruce was very mealy mouthed and you know it, like it's almost as if he has Alfred waiting in the wings here if he needs to come in with this friggin' oh that was his first and last writing lesson like all that stuff Alfred <laughs> wow wooed Vicky Vale with in the last movie. This one Bruce kind of like he hits back as good as he as, as she gives. She's like, oh, doesn't this get a bit stale? And then he's just like, well, what about the, the you know, the lowly secretary syndrome or, or stuff? And then she has a, a real, like, uh, little, you know, assistant. And then, like, he has that moment his eyes shift and it's kind of real, like, okay, kind of vibe. But then she kind of, the ice breaks and she's like, you know, secretary. And then they're kind of like, oh, so there's no, there's no pretense between these two. They're, it's almost as if they immediately become completely honest with each other yeah so you know the the rapport is instantly there i think it actually works very well with this dialogue i agree but bruce's comeback i find bizarre where he says a lot like the lonely secretary syndrome because Mm. those those two things aren't comparable like what's he even saying with this you know a lonely secretary isn't choosing to be lonely whereas in her story he's choosing to be a bachelor I guess it may be because she's kind of accusing him of being a bit of a stereotype. And he's like, well, Mm -hmm. you yourself are a stereotype. So where where are you getting off? But she doesn't want to (laughs) be. Yeah, no, that is true. But I guess he's like, he's got to give something back where he's like, (laughs) he can't just come out with like, okay, well, I'm not a gold-plated bachelor. I'm actually Batman. F*** you. (laughs) (laughs) I always thought they um, they kind of saw it like even without saying uh, what their alter egos were. The two of them, since they have... One, they kind of saw it in each other. So even so, they're kind of like flirtily insulting each other. It almost seems warranted because in my mind, I'm thinking that the two characters know that they do have another side. Um, yes. Selena isn't Vicky, so she, you know, Bruce doesn't see her as, oh, I need to have this girl to make a normal life. He sees Selena and I think he also sees like, oh, she does have something troubled in her. I'm well, he going does actually to confide say- in that. A few minutes ago, he does say, you know, oh, you've got a bit of a dark side, don't you? Mm-hmm. Like, and I think he, he's not saying that in a mean way. He's, he's interested. He's like, oh, mm-hmm. that, that's, <laughs> that's like the thing. That's the thing we didn't we didn't touch on in the last episode. The at last minute actually began with her going, no darker than yours, Bruce. So it's kind of like mm-hmm. that would okay. indicate that she knows that there's something else with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's the biggest takeaway in this scene uh, versus like future scenes with them. Um, you know, there's always been, there's always been women in Bruce's Wayne's life, like the billionaire kind of thing, right? The facade, yeah. And they have always been like these, uh, 
these nobodies, these uh, these empty shells of of you know what it what it's like to live the lavish life and stuff like that. And so these two characters, they have a hint that they have facades up of who they really are. And so they start this this conversation of almost roasting each other about those social those mm. social constructs and those facades that we put up um, to hide who we really are. And it starts out as like this playful, uh, this flirtful kind of roasting of each other. Um, and it's only because they want to, they both want to just show who they really are, but it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. small steps. They want to be that. themselves. Yeah. 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 And that's why that's what's so great about that's this. That's why movie. they're the best couple. That's man. why this movie is so good. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we get a lot of that over the next, the, the next two minutes, basically. Um, but you know, it would be uh, would be remiss though, because now we get an opening. We can talk a bit about the the dating history of Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne within the grander Batman lore and whatnot, because we kind of held off on these things until they become relevant. So uh, yeah, we can sort of go in a little a little bit here, because some of it would be almost kind of relevant to something that you guys might have to cover at some point, but probably not. So <laughs> that's a <laughs> convoluted not. way of putting that. Yeah. Why bring it up then? <laughs> no, I was just going to say because uh, you know Bruce and Selena, like the first meet, meet obviously back in Batman issue number one, uh, mm-hmm. and then she she was originally brought in to sort of give as much sex appeal to the pre pre code comics as they could allow. Basically, there's a lot of stuff with uh, from the off that it becomes apparent that Bruce Bruce is quite attracted to her. But I think of this was it uh, apparently Batman number fifteen in 1943 because Robin is already a thing at this point. Uh, mm-hmm. apparently at one point when talking about Catwoman, Robin asks, uh, what's got into you to the Batman? And Batman replies with patience, my lad, you're too young to understand these things, which is mm. just fantastic in its own right. <laughs> uh, there's actually patience, even in, you're glad. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, even in like the 60s show, I, I think in, um, was it would have been the, wouldn't have been Lee Merriweather, but on oh, the Julie Mo- Newmar Catwoman. Apparently, at mm-hmm. one point, almost confesses to loving Batman and stuff. Like it was always a thing that they they had, but then of course, in uh, around like the nineteen seventies and eighties, they, they had the whole the, the the various kerfuffles of you know crisis on infinite earths and stuff. But then mm-hmm. of course, you get the Earth Two version of the Golden Age, uh, Selena and Bruce, where they actually get married. And, uh, of course, now very relevant to talk about that because we're going through the Tom King storyline where Bruce and Selena were supposed mm-hmm. to get married. As, as, as of yet, has not worked out. Um, but they, uh, you know, the, their marriage actually leads to them get, having a daughter, Helena, who, of course, then would become the second Huntress, I believe. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but now the Huntress is a character that's going to pop up in the new DC movies, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And apparently they're doing... It's the uh, Helena or the yeah Helena Bertolini I think the, is the same yeah, name. It's not the yeah. it's not Helena Wayne. But the thing is, it could have been a good opening though because they had like if it was in continuity with you know Ben Affleck's older Batman. You could have had it be you know you could have had him maybe have an older Catwoman as there as mm-hmm. well, and then you could have yeah. had it been that thing, that way, but. Chose not yeah. to go down that route, unfortunately. Yeah, there, well, there's a you know they can always spin things. You know, I, I think one of the weirdest things that the that comics try to do just for the just for sales is they do those kind of stunts um, that go nowhere, like things like oh we'll kill a superhero off, we'll make a lot of money because it'll sell, and then we'll bring the character back, kind of thing. It, it's the same thing with. Um, trying to escalate this relationship between Batman and Catwoman. Uh, the, the the best way it works is this kind of, this struggle. You know, we talked about it yesterday or Monday uh, about the tragedy with the, the relationship. And that's, and that's where the real beauty is, is in that tragedy. And so, like, it's great that these, these are two, uh, these two insane people they belong in an asylum right like mm-hmm. they dress up they they go do this cape crusader nonsense um they play this cat and mouse game cat and bat game if you will god um, you really <laughs> had to say that. and like <laughs> and then they they do this dance and uh, and then they can't have each other but they want to be with each other and that's and that's where the beauty is in that theatricality um it's weird that they go oh but then all of a sudden batman 
wants to believe in the uh, the social construct that is marriage you know yeah. like the the this fabricated capitalistic kind of like uh thing that is like oh well let's get married that involves a wedding and 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 marriages are a symbol of love instead of a symbol of uh or a, a thing to just you know get taxes <laughs> deducted <laughs> You know, like, it, it's so weird. It's so weird that Batman would get on one knee like you're supposed to do, have a ring like you're supposed to do, yeah. and marry this woman to live the rest of your life with. It's it's, it's a, it's like, that's, at what point is Batman going, yeah, this is logical. This is, a, this, like, this is what I want. It's, <laughs> I it like doesn't it. make any sense. And then, and then they go, oh, yeah, that can't happen. It's like, dude, we saw that coming a mile away. You can't have, you can't get married. They like, and like, everyone's, Everyone's acting so surprised that it's like, oh, what do you mean they didn't get married? Oh, what do you mean of she bailed out? It's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. what, what, do you, what were you expecting? It's like, they just wanted money. They wanted you to buy the books, my guy. It's like, it blows my mind. It, that even, even if Batman were to get married, it would never be in a normal way. It would never be done in that sense. It wouldn't, you know, people were expecting, as you say, down on one knee, and then they'll be like, oh, there's a nice dress, and all this. No, that, yeah. none of this would occur. I guess maybe that's why, it, like, Selena would be the only one viable as, like, well, maybe they could get married because they're both weirdos. <laughs> like, they're, they're both out yeah. doing this costume crime fighter thing, and they've both got this sort of aloofness to them that maybe they could make it work. But like apparently, that was always a thing that even audiences just re- flat out reject the idea of, of that kind of thing. Because even back in like the fifties, apparently Catwoman was very much in the back back burner because they were trying to push this more wholesome comic in, uh, image. And apparently, they did also have things where like storylines where Batman was getting married to uh, Kathy Kane, like the original uh, Batwoman. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. then, you know, people just didn't like it. <laughs> then they would end up being like, no, it was all a dream Robin had or something. Yeah. <laughs> because they're like, no, people, Batman only works when he's a single guy. Like, it's it, he's mm-hmm. much better when he's by himself. He can get into sidekicks and stuff. But he himself, you know, that's why nowadays we have the much more popular version of him as this hardened, very emotionally distant, you know, dark, brooding loner and stuff. Rather than, you know... Just happy go lucky. Hey, maybe yeah. I'm getting a, a costume wedding and stuff. And oh, hey, Superman's yeah. wearing a bow tie and stuff. <laughs> that kind of thing. What a great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The only the only way it like and I, like I just tried thinking about it and it made so much that so much sense in my head that now I hate it. But it's like the only way it would work is if uh, to to sell the facade of Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne marries. Selena Kyle, someone who would play the game as like, oh yeah, Bruce Wayne just sits at home. He doesn't do anything at mm-hmm. night. And so they have this facade of their marriage, but then they start to fall in love with the idea of what that is. And then they're like, oh, what if we did just relax? And, uh, and then it's like, then it makes sense because you guys are technically already married. Like a, a Mr. and Mrs. Smith thing, but if it worked out. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, what if it was one of those? And then it's like, damn, that makes so more sense. I hate it. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know. It, the... The only way it ends is in tragedy. And I think of like those love affairs to be more like, no, I'm only turned on when when we're in our suits fighting crime, Mm -hmm. like Watchmen style kind of thing. And it's like that's that to them is them. That makes sense. That's who that's them at their most vulnerable and at themselves. And that is what's romantic to them. Um, And there's nothing romantic about getting settling down married. happily ever after yeah not to them <laughs> yeah no yeah not for these them. characters yeah, i'm not talking about in real life that's right. i don't know anything about that <laughs> yeah and that's what bothers me it's you know it's like uh and so what you know whatever there are different iterations of batman and catwoman there are out there um i think this is one of the better ways to to represent that story um some of them don't shed enough light some of them are like um like the dark knight I think the Injustice series does it too. Oh yeah, it's like, okay. are you guys you together? Do you, you hate each other? You guys, What's going yeah, on? Yeah, what is your <laughs> what is your story here? And and sometimes you know there are things that the Injustice storyline does great and does better than most things, but the 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 Catwoman is too loosely like 
I'm with this people and I'm not. Oh, are we still good buddies? It's like, are you trying to kill me or not, lady? Like, I gotta, I got things to do. <laughs> the whole here. bad feeling was a little too fleshed out in that series. Like, yeah. they were too comfortable being that team. It yeah. was a little. There was no ominous to it. Anyway, that's Anyways. besides the point. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But anyways, if the DC Cinematic Universe wants to incorporate Catwoman, Charlize Theron has always had my vote. I'm just putting that out there. Oh, uh, yeah. that you was could one, always say that is one of our questions. Usually, it's like, oh, who would you cast <laughs> as Catwoman if the, if it were oh, a yeah. thing now? So Charlize so, Theron's your instant choice. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, go I'm watch. Glad you uh, have a choice. Most people go, yeah. oh, I don't know. Uh, uh. <laughs> no, <laughs> go watch Atomic Blonde. Yes, that is her. <laughs> I really enjoyed a lot of that movie. I, I did. I, maybe I was watching it with the wrong mindset, though. I found the plot a bit confusing. It yeah. got like uh, convoluted by the end. But she was amazing, and the action was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the second time I watched yeah. it, I loved it. I had to watch it twice. Like, the first time I was like, okay, and I was kind of like, mm, oh, cool spy movie. And yeah. then like, yeah. and then the, and second the second time, time I was like, whoa. I think the second time I understood the aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me and too. Then, and then like. You got and a I, time period in mind. It's yeah. like, okay, I'm in this. I'm and in then this. I didn't, uh, at first I didn't get the, the twist between her yeah. and, uh, and John, John Goodman. Goodman. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. he said something and then I was like, oh, it wait happened, a minute. Like, the second time I was like, <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I could see her playing playing the role. Definitely. That, that'd be a, an interesting choice. A bit different to mm-hmm. what I imagine most people would, would go with. Yeah. Ooh. Well, you got to remember that this Ben Affleck Batman is like an older Batman. And so Charlize mm. Theron is older and they're kind of among the same age. And so like they could have had uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead's Huntress, at, you know, like, you know, in, in a very romantic affair. And, and maybe, you know, they she is <laughs> be, now a vigilante. That'd be the thing, though. Like, imagine know? like someone from the D.C. like in the studio is listening to this and it's like that's the twist at the end of the damn movie you <laughs> like don't <laughs> yeah. tell people this now well, it, just, it just makes more sense than like like oh you can only have kids when you sit down and get married and then you have the kid it's like what if you just you know you guys are chasing each other on rooftops things get a little too hot and heavy sometimes things slip yeah <laughs> you know there's a lot of leather involved there's a lot of leather <laughs> yeah and so and so like yeah maybe... you don't know if that's a tail or something else <laughs> yeah uh you know uh, chicks with whips yeah, that's what i was about <laughs> to say chicks with whips don't, don't uh google that oh, well maybe do i mean it depends what you're what you're doing on this lovely wednesday it's just it, that's it, i don't know it's, it makes more sense to me that you know someone who uh especially you know hunches to get into like fighting crime vigilantism like you can't have a nice life either like mm-hmm. that, you, what are you gonna have a daughter <laughs> like as a married couple and then she's gonna end up being a superhero this is bad writing yeah yeah like more like you'd have to have more of like that jason todd upbringing where it's like yeah, I didn't really know my parents, and uh, it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Um, really There's ma- this crazy bat guy that jumps off the yeah, roof, and, he, and he, we got the same eyes, apparently. <laughs> yeah, so go with that. Um, I think that's the best way. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you have like a. You know, do I have a guess for someone? Um, you know, I'm, and it's it's different. I do. I'm on board with your Charlie Theron one. That's now I can't really get that that out of my head. But I'm, I'm a I'm a fan of Anne Hathaway and. For that movie, it was fine. Mm-hmm. She was a good Catwoman. Fine for... or fine? She was fine. <laughs> um, she was a good Catwoman for Christian Bale um, in his sad attempt to be Bruce Wayne. Um, <laughs> so she was the better version of that character. You know what I mean? It's like, in yeah. this movie, you get Michelle Fiverr and you get Michael Keaton. Both are like hard hitting. They are firing on all cylinders 100% in the character, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And then you jump to, you know, Dark Knight Rises and everything like that, where there it is a, another somewhat rehash of this movie, kind of. Um, yeah, yeah. But then the relationship, it's, um, the Bruce Wayne falls sh- way short to me. And Catwoman is standing out more because she's more independent and that Bruce is like still trying to like, oh, we got to build a team. Shut up. You're not like that. <laughs> anyway. Shut up. Um, so I, I, I liked Anne Hathaway's Catwoman. I liked her outfit. I liked, <laughs> I just like her. Um, but someone that would be casted now, I don't know. And then my mind just goes back to Snyderverse and Carla Gugino. Like it's just, yeah, she's yeah. just a beautiful woman. Uh, and it's like, oh, that'd be cool. But then I don't know if I can picture her 
No, I can picture her with a whip. Um, <laughs> yeah, we you saw have. her. Yeah. yeah, we've seen it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm all I'm on board for that Charlize one. Let's see that. But, uh, but yeah, uh, mm-hmm. in terms of what's happening in the minute, um, there's not actually not that, all that much. We've just pretty much got like I've got notes here saying that Bruce Wayne does not skimp on apples because he's got a huge <laughs> plate of apples in front of the fire. Where? Yeah, and where is the TV? I think it's down <laughs> to the side. <laughs> Like that's... Yeah, he's got it on like a, a weird little cabinet on the side. Does it does it have wheels on it? I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, Alfred's he... having to haul that TV over. Like, oh, I think he them. does. I think he makes him wheel it over when he wants to watch it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a very old fashioned house. In that you know, it, TVs weren't a concern when this was made. So, mm-hmm. like now. People do try and uh, design, not design the house, but you know, their layout of their house around the TV. That's what you do. Like, oh, the TV's mm-hmm. the focal point. Bruce, he doesn't care about that kind of thing. He, whatever. I know from being, you must have done this too well, John, because I remember like going to your new house and walking into the living yeah. room, and it's like, this is the same exact layout. <laughs> <It's> just, like, <laughs> you might as well have just like, tardised your old house into a new house or something. <laughs> It's genius, isn't it? I have a, I have a thing. I have an aesthetic. Crowd around the TV. Yeah, but it's just like even the, the computer's in the same spot. What the hell's going on? No, it's not. The computer's <laughs> the one thing that isn't. Oh. <laughs> John's house but, um, minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Bruce asks Selena. Well, sorry, <clears throat> other way around. Selena asks Bruce if she has a girl. F- I've, I've messed it up again. You have to delete. <laughs> Selena, Selena asks Bruce if he has a girlfriend, and he kind of misunderstands and says, sure. Like, does he think that she is kind of asking him to go steady, like, uh, as the Americans say? Like, is, does he think she's saying, can I be your girlfriend? Because he's like, oh, sure. <laughs> it's a very odd reaction. Playing, yeah, I think he was playing more towards the um, the, the billionaire playboy facade. where. Yeah. Uh, and like I mean, it, knowing how Michael Keaton is portraying his Bruce Wayne, it seems like he's just like that. Michael Keaton does these things where he like goes off into his mind and has to think about like the answer before he says it. Yeah. But while he's saying the answer, he's still thinking about what he's supposed yeah, to yeah. say. <laughs> so it's like that's his Bruce Wayne, where he's just like girlfriend. Yeah, let's see. Let me count them. There was this girl <laughs> from yesterday. There was oh, don't even get me mentioned Vicky. Like it's one of those. <laughs> I think it, it. I think it's a great. Uh, it's a great line. I love. I, it's a good joke. It's like good delivery. I. Uh, I think that's a. That's a good line to use. Uh, girlfriend, sure. It's like I. Of course. I do. I do <laughs> love that line. It, it. It is to me just genuinely funny yeah. in like a very awkward that cringe humor kind of way, and it's like oh. yeah. He's quite a dorky kind of guy when he when he tries to be a normal person. <laughs> it doesn't work. Does it, it seems to be particularly yeah. around Selena because when we first met her, there was the whole like, you know, like oh I'm listed, oh I'm interested, you know I'm working, I'm I'm leaving. Like he seemed to be really, and like even like the whole like oh let's say five, let's say six. Like he seemed to be so eager and very uncool. And even this now, it wouldn't surprise me if this is sheer dorkiness of of Bruce to be like she says girlfriend. He's just like she asked me, she wants to be gr- girlfriend boyfriend. Yeah, sure. Like, oh, you mean okay? Like, I wouldn't be surprised that he's so smitten and he just cannot maintain. Maybe it's just because, like, yeah, Catwoman, Selena Kyle, Catwoman is such a cooler character than Bruce Wayne in general that it's not coming across like she seems so calm and collected in this whole scene, where he yeah. still is the yeah. kind of nervous guy on a date and stuff. In comparison, oh yeah, it's been a, there. It's a, <laughs> it's a Michael Keaton moment. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. Sometimes For sure. we we cast these actors to portray portray these characters, and we really, uh, when we do that, we really do want that actor to to sh- be sh- to, to be showcasing why they chose it. Mm. And so, like, we have Will Smith as Deadshot in Suicide Squad, and it's one of those things where, um, it's like, okay, we know why will smith was casted to be the like the main mm-hmm. person it's because people want to see will smith be will smith but mm-hmm. also be dead shot and so it's like with this it's like people want to see michael keaton be michael keaton as bruce wayne and like it's what's so weird about it is um kevin smith when he was on the documentary for um the death of superman lives 
he was saying that there was backlash when Michael Keaton was cast as Bruce Wayne, but there was no internet back then, so like it really didn't matter or it wasn't as obvious back then. But like everyone was like, "Oh, the guy who in, from the Mister Mom mm-hmm. sitcom is uh, <laughs> is being Bruce Wayne." That's awful, and it's like, okay, we talk so much garbage about this decision, and yet when the movie comes out and Michael Keaton does what you were afraid of. You're laughing about it. And so it's like, it's the same thing with, um, you know, like, oh, just dead, what about Will Smith as Deadshot? Oh, that's awful. I don't want to mm. see Will Smith. Will Smith is not Deadshot. And then it happens and people go, oh, yeah, Will Smith was the best part of that movie. And you're like, <laughs> and then same thing, Ben Affleck is Batman. Oh, Ben, like, that's terrible. And then you go, oh, that's the best part of that movie. It's like, <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. what are you guys yelling about? You're just going to end up loving it. There's something that I want to kind of tag on to that. Um, they, it's a little bit of a, a different movie. So in Birdman, Michael Keaton mm-hmm. is playing the character that's supposed to reflect his time as Batman. Mm-hmm. There's uh, he goes to this one. What was she? She was like a reporter or something like that. Uh, the critic uh, for the play or whatever. Yes. Yes. And she's talking to Edward Norton, I think. And um, or maybe she's just talking to my. Anyway, the point being is that she says she's turning him down like he's trying to do Broadway. She says, you're not an actor. You're a celebrity. And that goes back to like. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my opinion i think a good majority amount of people will can you know think about michael keaton it's like oh yeah he was batman not the fact that hey michael keaton is a phenomenal actor mm-hmm. because yeah. he can get into these characters and play them how the character should be yeah um and like that's just i, mean, I just wanted to tag that on because now you're thinking that michael keaton should be playing the celebrity oh michael keaton as batman no Michael Keaton is playing the character Batman and Bruce Wayne, and mm-hmm. it's fantastic. So I, I like the they did make a point in that in Birdman, and it was it was great. Oh, he's he's a hugely underrated actor overall. I mm-hmm. would say he, you know, he obviously is a very successful man, but I think he should have gone on to even bigger successes. Yeah, you know, he should yeah. have been in the running for some huge parts. But yeah. I mean, like even we're doing Jackie Brown now on Tarantino, and he is man killing it as yeah. uh, that detective in that in that movie, and it's again. Yeah, he's not playing a guy in a cape and mask. He's playing this L.A. detective. And it's like, man, you're just star-studded cast, guys. Yeah, and he, he pulls these he pulls these roles off even when you think he won't. Like, as you say, nobody thought he could do this. And he blows it out of the water completely. Uh, and he, he does regularly in every part I've seen him in, I think. He's always top-notch. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's one or two where he's crap. Everyone has a, a bad moment. But, you know, o- overall... Fantastic. Yeah, have you, ever, uh, have you ever seen the movie Jack Frost? <laughs> oh, uh, hey man. Yeah, yeah. For what it no. is, it's fine. You know, it's not my kind of thing, but you know. He's the, probably the best part of that movie. <laughs> Snow Dad yeah. is better than No Snow Dad. Snow Dad is better than No Dad. You're right. <laughs> but, uh, no, we, we get one last thing here before uh, the minute ends. Because Selena wants to guess why things didn't work out with Vicky. Because uh, yeah, he, he mentions Vicky. That's a big thing. Hang on. He actually brings up her name. And Selena wants to guess like why things didn't work. I think so though, it's, says, it's, uh, Vicky's not specifically mentioned until the next minute, though. Because it's like, it says, like, well, it's an allusion to Vicky. First. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Well, the next well, minute's the mention. We're left on what they call a uh, cliffhanger. Oh, oh yeah, I've heard of those. But she says, uh, like, yeah, let me guess. You, you kept things from her. And he says, no, I told her everything. Like that's the problem, mm. and I don't. I think that's a hundred percent what it is. Like she probably couldn't handle that he is so one track minded. Mm. Like imagine mm-hmm. actually putting up with this guy as your your romantic chap, yeah. you know, as your mm-hmm. in any romantic capacity. I, I don't see that working. If he's being honest, you'd rather he was lying. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's just one of the things. Like that's why this relationship didn't work is because she wanted this this facade that he was putting on. Yeah. And then you know, when she found out the actual truth of the guy, it couldn't work. But, you know, he could potentially make it worth, work with someone who has the same issues that he does. Could yeah, it be yeah. Selena Kyle, perhaps? <gasps> Will it work? Um, so uh, I guess before we wrap up, Nate, uh, how about we well, how about we promote Tarantino Minute real quick? Oh, yeah. Instead of DC Cinematic Minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark and I do another podcast with uh, another one of our friends. Um, there's three of us there. Um, and we go through uh, all of Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino's movies, um, minute by minute. Now we're on Jackie Brown. We're actually going five minutes by five minutes. So new format. Oh. Um, 
great characters in that. Michael Keaton making an appearance. Michael so Keaton. if you want more Michael Keaton, uh, definitely pop over there. You got the um, Bridget Fonda, that... the wife of Danny yeah. Elfman in there as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's all on. Bridget Fonda is married to Danny Elfman. Yeah, yeah. he really liked that toe thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. He was like, he was like, can you uh, on the? I, I want to marry you, but on the sole purpose of you sticking your toe in my drink. <laughs> the sole um, purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're firing on all cylinders. Um, <laughs> I think you can find that podcast uh, anywhere you listen to your podcast, and on the internet at Tarantino Minute. Mm. And uh, yeah. So do that and join us on Facebook at the Bat Minute Listener's Cave. And I won't promote the other stuff. You're used to it all by now. Pfft, it's Wednesday, whatever. We're, it's, we're running late here. <laughs> Who cares? Get a move on. Go. See you on Friday. Au revoir. Next time, more and more for Le Chevalier Noir. Discussions on the difficulty of duality are delved into by our doting debaters. But which duo of disturbed diabolicals will be deemed a conversational elective by a certain date night detective? Find out Friday. Same bat pod. Different bat minute.